harvest dates in Coombsville as compared to maybe the rest of the valley? Anyone have any thoughts on that? You know, um, I have to say that I am often surprised that some of the properties that I work with in Coombsville harvest at the same time as some of my St. Helena vineyards. Do you have that same experience? Yeah, I, I, for Chard Chardonnay, generally we come, the, the Marcoumzilla vineyards are some of the first stuff that comes in at, yeah. the, at the end of August, early September. But we, um, we worked with a little Coombsville fruit for, for our Napa Valley program this year, and I was kind of putting them at like, oh, well, they're going to be later. And then we went out, oh, oh, no, they're not going to be it's later. Time. It's yeah. like, and there was amazing color <coughs> this year in yeah. Coombsville Cabernet. It was really yeah. intense. Yeah. And, and I think that, so I think there's a broad range yeah. of what can be harvested or of harvest dates within Coombsville because of, you know, the, some of these different, we talked about the different microclimates throughout this little AVA. And so some people are, you know, harvesting October, pushing November in late years. And some people are, you know, middle of September mm -hmm. for Cabernet for sure. or Cabernet Franc. This, yeah? Is the harvest decision still generally based on bricks or other factors? Uh, I think they're, you know, typically bricks and then also flavor, you know, going out there. I'm sure, I mean, we all are in the vineyards every, you know, all the time before a pick decision is made. Yeah. I think, I mean, I, most of you are, are harvesting based on phenolic and how things are tasting. Yeah, and I mean, you look at you look at the acidity in the grapes, the bricks is a, an indicator. <coughs> also the level of malic acid, you want the malic acid to be low. That's sort of a, one of the things that get, gets metabolized late in the season. Um, also looking at phenolic maturity, so seed ripeness, color in the skins, those kind of things. And one thing that's great about Coombsville is that, you know, all these reactions, like the producing of color and the ripening of the tannins, those are enzymatic reactions, which happen in a certain temperature zone. And I think we're in that zone just for most of that later part of the season. It doesn't get too warm and we're in a cooler environment. So we do have a lot of great color in the wines and great aromatics. It, aromatics. it can be a bit of a nail biter. Like last year was a cool vintage and a couple of our Coombsville vineyards, it was, if we had had rain two weeks earlier than we did, it could have been Disastrous. It could have been a different situation, but we, we ended up making some really nice wines, but at the end of October. Um, and we do have some earlier Coombsville vineyards, but Coombsville <coughs> is always the last stuff that we're harvesting in my little realm, so it's, it's exciting. That's a good segue into, like, what are some of the challenges that you face in Coombsville <coughs> that you maybe don't have in other EVAs? Frost. <laughs> it's very cold. Mm -hmm. um, we have, and we're, you know, it's, it's a bowl. So if you're in the lower part of that bowl in the springtime, it can get very cold. And so frost is a problem. And then just the later harvest, but I, I, I mean, the world the way it is, it, that's not as much of a problem as it probably could have been 20 years ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, 